Thank you once again from Crunch Econometrics. In this video, we shall be looking at VAR and impulse response function using e-views. So what do you understand by impulse response function? You can explain it to mean the reaction of an endogenous variable to one of its innovations. You can also say that an impulse response function describes the evolution of the variable of interest, that is the outcome variable, along a specified time horizon after a shock in a given moment. It is also an essential tool in empirical causal analysis and policy effectiveness analysis. IRF, the impulse response function, also tracks the impact of a variable on other variables in the system. Other interpretation is that it traces the effects on present and future values of the endogenous variable of one standard deviation shock to one of its innovations. In signal processing, the impulse response of a dynamic system is its output when presented with a brief input signal called an impulse. The impulse response function can also be used to explain the concept of pass-through. This is when you are looking at the degree at which changes in a variable are passed to other variables at different stages, either directly or indirectly. Also, the impulse response can also be used to further assess the tendencies of significant grandeur costa relationship in a given model. So on the screen, you can see the three variable VAR model that we shall be using in this tutorial. PDI, PC, GDP, all in their log forms. And like we all know, the use are the stochastic error of terms, also known as impulses or innovations. So this is where the tutorial will be focused on mainly. Then remember that in a VAR model, there are no exogenous variables. All variables are endogenous. And um, VAR must be specified in levels. If you specify it in differences, you have simply misspecified that VAR model. To buttress the previous explanations, individual coefficients in the estimated VAR model are often difficult to interpret. Therefore, practitioners often estimate the IRF. This is because the IRF traces out the response of the dependent variable in the VAR system to shocks in the error terms. And the shocks are simply the UI, the U2, and U3 from the previous example of the three variable VAR model I just showed you. Supposing UI in the PDI equation increases by a value of one standard deviation. So what would be the spillover effect to the variables in the fast system? Such a shock or change will first of all affect PDI in the current period as well as future periods. But because PDI appears in the PCE and GDP regressions, the change or shock to the error term will also have impacts on PCE and GDP. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to the model. Let's look at the three variable VAR model and examine the effect of a one standard deviation shock to UI. UI is the error term for the PDI equation. If there is a shock to UI, there's going to be, first of all, a direct effect on PDI current, at the current period and also for the future periods of PDI. But also, the one standard deviation shock will also affect PCE and GDP. How? Remember, PDI is in the PCE equation. So there's going to be an influence on PCE because of that. And also because PDI is in the GDP equation, if there is a shock to UI, it's going to affect both PCE and GDP. Similarly, a change of one standard deviation in UT, which is the error term of the PCE equation, it will have an impact on both PDI and GDP. The same thing will happen if there is a change of one standard deviation in U3, which is the error term in the P GDP equation. Like we said before, the IRF traces out the impact of shocks for several periods in the future. Although the utility of the IRF analysis has often been questioned by researchers, it is still the centerpiece or the workhorse of VAR analysis. So let's examine the step-by-step -step procedure. How do we go about it? Number one, specify the model. Number two, carry out the test for stationarity. Determine the optimal lags for the model. Estimate the basic VAR. 
perform some diagnostics, normality test, autocorrelation, stability, then go ahead to perform impulse responses and interpret the results. These are just the preamble. So if you need further referencing or more readings on VAR and impulse response function, I will encourage you to look at these uh, textbooks. And if you have any simpler textbook that you're familiar with, please go through them. Stay with me. In the next video, I will take you through the practical example of how you can estimate the impulse response function and also interpret the results.